Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of Into the Void! Today we've got a game between Matima and Medieval Spag <laughs> on Neon Violet Square, the latter edition. In the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we have the red Terran player. It is Matima. And in the top left-hand corner of the map, it is the blue Zerg player, Medieval Spag, or Spach. That's like a Scottish word, or possibly Klingon. Spach. <laughs> That's how that sounds to me. Okay, so welcome to Into the Void. We have a whole big influx of brand new players to StarCraft II. Maybe they've been watching uh, YouTube casts, maybe they've been watching pros, but never actually played the game themselves. This is one of those cases. All right, so this is going to be a lot of learning and a lot of laughing. Thank you so much for sending this in. If you are an Into the Void player, which just means bronze or silver or very, very, very new to StarCraft 2, go ahead and send me a replay at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Into the Void, and we can go over it, discuss things that could be improved, and also just have a good time here on the channel. That's what it's all about. All right, so a couple things here. We've got an extractor from Medieval. He's doing nothing with it. There is no spawning pool yet, and there's an expansion going down. So generally, what you want to do with Zerg is you have some options. You can go extractor and then a spawning pool and then a hatchery. You can go a hatchery and then a pool and then an extractor. You can go a hatchery and then an extractor and then a pool. But the one thing you don't ever want to do is go extractor into hatchery. Does this make sense? This makes sense what I'm saying here. So definitely, and if you're going to get an extractor, put some workers on it. Notice it tells you you can put three on there to fully saturate it. That's fantastic. But no matter the order we got here, Matima did manage to get here. So that's good news for him. Meanwhile, or medieval rather, Matima on the other side is walling off with supply depots. He also has a uh, refinery. He is getting gas for that. But his first barracks has not even started to construct yet. So... Generally, what you want to do here is you want to go <laughs> Supply Depot into a barracks. And then maybe get a refinery. You can start with a refinery if you want. But generally, you want to start this thing before the two and a half minute mark. Is how this works. I do love the drone scouting from Medieval, though. Checking to see exactly what's going on and then going home. Okay, you can use this drone scout. You can use the worker scout to stick around. If there's no, nothing actively killing you, set it on a patrol. Just click somewhere, pet press P, and click somewhere else, and it will go back and forth and back and forth. At the very least, you can see what kind of buildings your opponent is building and get a general idea of what's going on. Although we do have this .9 Overlord moving in. What up, .9 Overlord? Where you are? .9 move speed. Look how zippy this guy is. It was upgraded from .81, so it doesn't seem like it'd be that much, but it just feels like so much more. Meanwhile, Medieval is sending a bunch of lings across the map here. This wall looks to be pretty good. For Matima. I am worried about the gap right here. And I'm worried about the gap right here a little bit, but there's really, I guess, nowhere to go for Lings if they do decide to take advantage of that one. So the Lings are here, and there's nothing to stop this at all. There's a Marine in production. The Zerglings for Medieval are here. They decide, all right, let's knock down this wall. Let's see. What do we want to get? This supply depot. Four of my Lings can hit it. That's a good place to take it down. SCVs are going to repair it. The Marine comes out and does manage to shoo these Lings away. And by his, I mean, don't let them all die. Come on, Medieval, get them out of there. And he does. Okay, he does pull them out. A little bit late, but that's better than nothing. Meanwhile, there is a Baneling Nest on the way from Medieval. He's got double gas here. He saturated one extractor, but not the other one, strangely enough. And he's doing a pretty good job saturating both of his bases here. So, Medieval, some general concepts of what's going on. Matima, on the other hand, is making barracks, queuing up a lot of dudes. Okay. Now, this seems like a good idea, right? But no, it is not a good idea because what this does, it takes your money. It takes the money out of your bank up here and puts them into this barracks. You can't use this money while it's in queue. So what you want to do is make maybe one, well, ideally make one Marine at a time as there's the mainlings coming up and then make another one, then make another one after it's done. You can queue up maybe two, but this many is just not good. Also, add-ons are something you can do in StarCraft 2 right here. Reactors and Tech Labs. Reactors are great. They allow barracks, factories, and starports to create two units at a time, which is wonderful if you're trying to make a big army all at once. And a Tech Lab here, too, for upgrades for your dudes. If you're making a lot of Marines, upgrades for those Marines are going to be very handy. You're going to want to get Combat Shield. Does it say that here? No. Combat Shield and Stim for your Marines if you're going to make this many of them. Unupgraded Marines are good, but not that good. 
as it turns out. Matima is expanding. Basically walled off here right now. He's got a factory coming up at the five minute mark. It looks like our Zerg player is a little bit more, a little bit more experienced in the game. But we will see who comes out on top. Hatchery, third hatch here at this gold base for Medieval. I think recognizing the Terran player is a little bit afraid to come out. A little bit of a wall off going on here. So I'm going to take advantage and expand a couple times. These Banelings, I don't know if they're intending on trying to break through this. But if you're uh, trying to break down a supply depot like this guy right here, you need five Banelings to do it. So if you're Medieval, five Banelings will explode it. You also want some Lings to follow up so they can do some damage. Uh, five Banelings will also kill a Bunker, if that's what you're interested in. And it seems like you probably should be. Meanwhile, uh, Banelings exploding on that SCV. Coming up, trying to see if there's a place to expand or scout. And does find our friendly Banelings and Zerglings with some better micro, better just control of these units. You could see the SCV coming and not waste a Baneling on them. Kind of like that. One Baneling for one SCV and one Baneling for one Marine is... It's a, it's basically considered a bad trade, <laughs> is what it is. If you're the Terran player, don't do that. Also, another upgrade or another suggestion for my teammate is an upgrade to an orbital command. Oh, he's doing it. Okay, good. I was worried. I was worried for a bit here. You do want to upgrade your these guys to orbital commands or planetary fortresses? Just do something with them. A command center that is by itself is not any good to anyone. And now here we go. This barracks not actually doing anything and is getting a reactor. Excellent, Matima has figured out exactly what to do with those reactors. So, Medieval is up. 89 to 50 total harvesters. He's got some roaches. He's got some lings. Going to move them out here. About a seven-minute roach ling rush. A lot of gas income here for Medieval. A lot. That's, wow. Has four fully saturated extractors and is going roach ling. Okay, another suggestion. If you're going roach ling, you don't need this much gas. If you have this much gas, you can go mutalisk. Right, build a spire after your lair is done. You can do that with your drones. Uh, or if you want to rush to something like Infestors and Ultralisks and Broodlords and things like that, you can use this gas. But for now, it's just starting to stack up here. And Matima's actually getting a lot of gas too and basically just building Marines. Although a tank is on the way. Single tank coming in here. This Roach attack could be very devastating for Matima. It's going to attack right up this front door. And I kind of like it. Pro tip from Falcon Paladin. Some of these could be Roaches. Medieval has enough money to upgrade, I think, all of these to Ravagers. Did I say Roaches? These could be Ravagers right here. Upgrade Morph to Ravager as they're taking this tank fire. That is the reason. Tanks do extra damage versus armored things, which is what Roaches are. When you upgrade these guys to Ravagers, they lose that armored tag and just becomes a biological unit. So they don't take extra damage from tanks. They have a corrosive bile ability that lets them shoot long distances and get stuff that holds still. Really good against stuff that holds still. Siege tanks are a good target there but yeah trying to break this now that there are siege things now that there are marines with just roaches and lings it is going to be a bad idea medieval is fairly scared of that tank but at the same time perhaps attacking earlier might have gone fairly well before that tank came out i mean that's a lot of marines but once again there are no upgrades for them although matima has started a plus one attack upgrade here at this engineering bay at the natural base which is still just a command center it looks so naked it looks so naked to be just a command center fourth base Fourth hatchery here for Medieval Spach in the bottom leftish, just south of that natural. And Medieval's not quite sure what he wants to do here is the problem. Floating a ton of money. Something that you do want to do in StarCraft is spend that money. If you notice 2,000, 3,000 minerals, 2,000 gas up there, that just means you need to build more production facilities. That's more hatcheries. Inject better. If you're the Zerg player, Medieval Spach, this is one of the hardest things for new Zerg players to learn is the injecting here. These queens have energy. You use the inject or the spawn larva button to inject it on your hatcheries and it allows them to create more larva which you use to make units and drones and things like that. I'm not entirely sure Medieval Spock knows about this mechanic and if you don't know about the mechanic you're going to be in for a hard time ever getting out of bronze. All right so the roaches are here from Medieval. He's going to attack on in and there are the tanks though. The tanks and the marines. Tank marine pretty good against Roach. The Roaches, though, decided to go for it anyway here, trying to get rid of these dudes. And if you're attacking the tank directly with Roaches, you're going to do okay. Ooh, but a lot of you are going to die. Two Roaches survived, but they did take down a couple tanks and a bunch of Marines there at a potential third base location here for Matima, just north of the Natural. There is a Spire. Alright, somebody feels like a Spire is the way to go. 
At the lower levels, if your opponent is going a lot of Marines, as it seems that Matima is trying to do, going for Mutalisks is going to be a bad time. It is. It's just going to be a bad time. Mutalisks are terrible against Marines, especially if they have upgrades. Oh, an inject. Medieval did inject on this gold base. Okay, so maybe he does know what it is. Oh, he's doing it. He heard me. He heard me through the power of YouTube and said, Ah, oh, Falcon just taught me about how to spawn more larva. Okay, that's probably arrogant of me to say. He probably knew. He just didn't bother to do it for most of the time here. So it looks like Medieval Spock's macro, as far as getting money and income and bases, is really good. It's just spending that money, making decisions, is going to be a difficult time for the Zerg player, which is probably why he is in bronze. Matima finally getting a couple of refineries here at the natural base. Again, not that he's really spending gas. Uh, tank production actually has been okay. There are three tanks right now. But it's 140, 152 to 69 total supply. Medieval is on fire, but really not putting any pressure on the Terran player at all. Now, this is a viable strategy for Zerg in StarCraft 2. If your opponent is really turtling up hard, you notice a lot of missile turrets ringing their base, a lot of tanks, a bunch of ravens possibly there for defense too. Although, is the raven good for defense now? That it's been changed mightily in 4.0. I don't think it's as good as it used to be that way. So perhaps not a bunch of ravens, but anyway, ton of static defense. Planetary fortresses, the works. You do want to expand everywhere. Expand everywhere. Get six, seven, eight bases. Because that Terran player can't move out because they are turtled up so hard. And then, when you have those bases, get a maxed up army, attack, probably lose a lot of the army, remax that army, attack again, and there's a good chance of winning. That is just a basic strategy that you can do. So, I feel like what Medieval is trying to do here. It is 182 to 200 total supply. He's maxed out, yo, here at the 12-minute mark. This used to be hard to do. This used to be something in Heart of the Swarm that getting a 12-minute max Zerg army was really difficult, especially if you have this many Mutalisks. Wow, Medieval. This is a lot of Mutas. 26 of them. Wow. Takes me back. Takes me back to the day of one of my first StarCraft II matches. It was on one of those practice maps, and it had the rocks separating the players, and I said, this I can't attack with ground. What is this? So I made some Mutalisks and flew over and killed my opponent. It was fun. <laughs> that's when I figured I was probably a little bit too good just for like super brand new practice because I did have some brutal War experience some Hellions here from Matima pro tip Hellions not great against Queens unless you outnumber them massively all oh, these Mutalisks though goodbye Hellions never mind we're not going to learn about Mutas very much anymore more hatcheries under construction here for Medieval he is expanding to the safe little pocket expansion here next to his main base back home and it looks like Matima oh going starport here and some missile turrets. Saw those mutas, saw the missile turrets. This bunker goes down, but the marines do manage to shoo them away here. Is this even enough marines? I don't know, but there's two missile turrets coming up here in the natural base. Three missile turrets coming up here in the natural base. These SCVs are building furiously. They are very good anti-air. These missile turrets are even better against mutalisks if you can repair them. So you bring your SCVs over, right click on the under attack missile turret. Several of them can repair at once and it makes them functionally immortal Unless, of, fact, of course, there are this many. I don't know. Is one missile turret enough against this many mutas? I don't think it is. <laughs> against 24. Yeah, possibly not. Medieval is upgrading his spire to a greater spire, which is what you can do. So the tech path to get to greater spire, which allows you to build the broodlords, is going to be spawning pool into lair, into infestation pit. Well, I guess into lair, into spire, into infestation pit, into hive, and then upgrading your spire to a greater Spire, it's not bad. Oh, we do have the Ravens. We do have the Ravens on the way here. Interference Matrix, Repair Drone, and Anti-Armor Missile. Repair Drone, pretty good. It's a deployable little spell unit thing that auto-repairs mech stuff in the area. So I've seen Nathanius use this, and it seems pretty fantastic. Really good at repairing battle cruisers and other Ravens and things like that. Not so much an offensive unit anymore, as Seeker Missile really used to make it a very good offensive unit. Uh, as well as auto turret, obviously, but now it's more of a support unit here. Interference Matrix disables a target unit, rendering it unable to attack or use abilities for six seconds. And reveals cloaked units. Hmm. Repair drone, repairing nearby mechanical units for 90 seconds. And anti armor missile. So it does 30 damage upon contact and reduces armor to affected units by three for 21 seconds. So that's your one offensive unit you have there. The Raven trying to head over here and do something about, the, uh, do something about these mutas, but. Actually, finding they have vacated the premises. Mutalisks with a million overseers from Medieval flying on in to this main base. No missile turrets in the main base. Ah, Matima has learned a very difficult lesson here. 
of no missile turrets in the main base. Unload. Unload your Marines. At least try to make this thing happen. Where is the attention right now for the Terran player? I think he's building more missile turrets than his natural. That's what he's trying to do. These dudes just are not interested in fighting, which... Don't know if I can blame him. Again, Marines are good, but not that good. So main base is going down to this Mutalisk attack at 15 minutes for Medieval. And is a maxed out army compared to an 86 supply army from Atima. And this missile turret count getting kind of insane. Picking off the Raven. Good target firing there from Medieval. Missile turrets splashing. Not splashing. It's not splash damage. It's single target damage. It only affects one unit at a time, but it hits pretty hard. Is what it does here. 12 damage times 2. 24 damage. Range of 7.61. Weapon speed. Yeah, that's bad news. The uh, starports are trying to flee to the natural base and safety, but nope. One of them dies. The other one, does he know about, he knows about repair. Good job. Good job, Matima. Understanding about repair to the point that he was repairing that starport for a second and then decided perhaps not to. Oh, good. Did send an SE over to get that repair done. Looks like he's repairing this marine, but that's not actually possible. Muta's flying in. A lot of missile turrets, though. Wow. Focusing down the missile turrets. Repairing missile turrets. Good marines. Attacking here, two Mutalist count is falling. There are 13 of them remaining missile turrets all over the place. Just owning these Mutas, especially if the Mutas don't have upgrades, and they don't. And wow, Mutalist army annihilated by Matima's dudes. Missile turrets on the ground. This Roach follow-up was trying to do stuff, but decided, you know what? No. We, uh, we're not going to go in there. There's still a bunch of tanks, and tanks scare us immensely. All right, so Matima, he has learned about drops. He's learned that these here medevac units can simultaneously transport and heal bio. No, don't fly into the corruptors. Don't do it. Corruptors are really good anti-air, especially extra damage done versus massive units, which is not what these dudes are. Oh, this is two medevacs here. Oh, boy. This is not going well for our Terran player at all. I mean, yes, did a good job getting rid of that evil Mutalisk army, but the Corruptors are a problem, and nine Broodlords is also going to be a massive problem. All right, so Broodlords, as we can see here, pretty good in the situation, pretty good for breaking a Terran player. Uh, the answer to Broodlords, though, is going to be Vikings. Vikings have good range. Vikings do extra damage versus armored stuff. You make them at the starport, you can double pump them with the reactor. All right, so here we go. Broodlords ready to rock. Getting some Corruptors in here, too, in case they need some anti-air. And the problem is, your Marines aren't going to be great. The Missile Turrets are not good because the Broodlords outrange them. The attack range on this is a range of 10. Missile Turrets have a range of, I want to say, 7? Range of 7. Significantly. Significant outrange, as it turns out. All right, so the Roach is joining the party. as a maxed-out Zerg army versus a 52 supply Matima, who has pretty much given, on, given up on making SCVs. He's got 27 of them. I guess he's oversaturated. At his one base. He is getting that pocket expansion, though. Trying to make that thing happen. Roach is just going for it, man. The tank. How many tanks are there? One? Oh, there's only one tank. That's not great. That is not ideal. So the tank's going to go down. But going to take a lot of roaches with him. The bunker is very good in this situation. The roaches do have plus two, plus two attack. Though. Ah, tanks unloading from this medevac. Going into siege mode. And the roaches. The roaches are dead. I don't know if Matima intentionally just sent those guys in to die or what. I don't think he needed to free up supply because he's not using the uh, supply that he has available. That 171 out of 200. Out of the 200. All right, so Medieval setting up with these Broodlords. Bringing some Queens too. Queens do have a transfuse ability. Allows them to heal 125 life to a target that is biological or a biological structure, which is really only Zerg stuff. And the Broodlords can benefit immensely from that Transfuse ability. Once the, oh, the tanks aren't gone, though. Get out of there, Queen. Queens, why are you attack moving into the situation? Medieval, control your people. Control your Queens. Oh, lifted the, lifted the siege tanks again. Why did you do this? There we go. Going back into siege mode and killing one of the Queens. Two of the Queens. Blorp. Body falling to the ground. Medieval scared again. There are tanks. Matima's like, what? Why are there queens attacking my front? That makes no sense. It's true. It makes no sense, but that's what happens on Into the Void. Medieval has taken a couple bases that he hasn't bothered to saturate at this point. I don't think he's mined anything from these mineral fields. Uh, or this one up here, this pocket expansion. He's been focusing entirely on the front, which again is just a newbie mistake. 
you need to be able to deal with your army at the front while continuing to make drones, while continuing to send drones from bases that are expired, where there aren't any minerals, and they're just kind of hanging out, and send them to bases that do have new mineral patches to harvest. So here we go. Medieval with the Corruptors. Trying to sneak around down this area. Corruptors do have the ability to puke caustic spray on the buildings, which emits a stream of acid that deals 7 damage per second for 4.3 seconds, then increases to 35 damage per second. The Broodlords are here too. I guess just the Broodlords were enough to kill the remaining extractors inside the main base of Matima. Now, missile turrets going to be good against these Corruptors, but once the Broodlords come to play... That's when all of everything is over for the Terran player. This, was, this is basically a game-winning unit for Zerg, especially in the lower leagues. It's hard for Terran players to handle if they don't see it coming, and I'm not sure that Medieval did see it coming. He's continuing to make missile turrets. I don't think he fully realizes these guys have the range that they do. This expansion from Metama in the back is going to go down. Pro tip, if your buildings are on fire because the broodlings on the ground, you can lift the buildings. There you go. And broodlords can attack them. Broodlords can only attack ground units, which is another reason the Vikings are really good against them, is they can't defend themselves from that. Bit of a drop here from Matima, though. Coming up this left side, he's got a couple tanks and a medevac. Going to try to do something, but the broodlings are just going to town on this natural base. The missile turrets are saying, why were we created? We are just useless in this situation. And it's true. It is true. You're useless in this situation. Tank trying to kill Broodlings, but again, killing Broodlings is kind of a useful gesture because Broodlings are free. The Broodlords don't have to pay money to make more. It's just a cooldown. Just have to wait a couple seconds and more will be here. Tank landing and just destroying stuff at the natural base of Medieval Spach. Pro tip, if a Terran player lands a couple tanks here and they're unprotected and you've got some drones around, surround the drones. Or surround the tanks with the drones. And they can kill them. There's a minimum attack range. For the tanks and if you're inside that area the tanks cannot attack you blue lords for medieval continue to attack on in ah my team lost lost the command center wait building another one wait lost it again it is a roller coaster right now is medieval trying to deal with these tanks i don't know but the natural base is going to go down uh, these queens really want to be involved, but they can't fly, so that's not great for them. And again, these Broodlords are entirely undefended. Yes, there are some Corruptors here. Medieval knows what he's doing. But if you made a couple Vikings out of the Starport, these guys would at the very least be forced to retreat. But this is going to be the final days of Matima. Losing that Starport, and Matima's out. Another pro tip. You want to say a good game, even if you lose, even if you're pretty upset about things. You want to say a good game, so... Great job there by Medieval. Again, I think he has more experience in StarCraft. 22-minute Broodlord attack is not ideal, but it was a little bit more cohesive a strategy than we saw from Matima. So pretty fun stuff there. Matima, I think, may have been the person who sent this in, actually. If the email I got makes any sense. But yeah, hopefully this has been an educational and an inspiring edition of Into the Void. There are very many new players out there who aren't quite sure what they're doing quite sure i'm not sure if we're going to find any replays from people who legitimately have never watched starcraft and never played starcraft before but i'll see what i can do about finding one of those for a future cast but regardless that's going to be it from me this has been falcon paladin coming to you with yet another edition of into the void go ahead and hit that like button hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today you can also catch me on twitter facebook and to Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. Broken and ashamed By what you have done There is no redemption And so you must run And it's taken your heart And broken your soul You cannot go back Until you're made whole
Into the void 